So to understand change, we need a bit more information on how the brain actually works. And this is breadth of knowledge, which later we can then apply uh, or find ways of applying in our personal lives or, or working lives. So like I said, the brain is made up of many, many neurons uh, linked together with uh, dendrites that form connections, which transmit electrical information and also chemical information. But neuroscience is complicated. We can get it down to three key words. There's input, integration and output. So sensory information comes in, it's integrated, and then there's a, an output, a result from that. The sensory input is the most important part. And it comprises the senses that we all know, uh, sight, smell, sound, taste, touch. But the sixth sense is proprioception. And that is our sense of where we are in space. And we get that from tendons, muscles, muscle spindles, and mechanoreceptors, which are in our bones, ligaments, capsules, and tendons, as I said before, and muscles. And these are stimulated when we move, but it's stimulated all the time, often without ourselves thinking about it. Because one constant stimulus we have is gravity, it's there all the time, apart from a few lucky people get to go uh, to get a view of the Earth from space. But smells come and go during the day. Light intensity uh, varies during the day and is often off at night. Sound can be very loud or very low or it can be in a silent environment. And we can have our mouths full of taste or good or bad or not. They're not constant, but gravity is constant. And our lives can be summed up as a, as a battle against gravity. So when uh, a young baby is born, uh, it will come out as a, as a small round lump in flexion, in a closed posture. And as a brain develops, it is, in, it is, it is able to reduce the heartbeat from 220 down to uh, 90 or 80 or 70 beats per minute. And the baby becomes a child that is able to resist gravity and stand on two legs. That's a major treatment. And saying the two legs we tend to wobble about, which is good for us. So wobbling and instability, paradoxically, is a means to gain stability. And how is that mediated? It's mediated through a piece of our brain called the cerebellum. Now, many years ago, uh, the Greeks looked at the brain and they found that the brain had a hard lumpy bit, which was the cerebellum. And the rest of the brain was a bit more soft and spongy, impressionable. So they guessed, or intuition led them to conclude, these great philosophers, that maybe learning happened in uh, the brain around the front, which is more soft and impressionable, and the cerebellum, which is hard, did other stuff. And that is very, very true. So our cerebellum receives the data from movement, principally, and acts as a dynamo to charge up the rest of the brain so it's ready to receive information which might be in a language, learn colours, numbers, or concepts that are much more advanced as we grow older. So this impressionable brain, the frontal lobes, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe, are the lobes where we keep our cognitive functions mainly. Uh, and our cerebellum is a dynamo that keeps the rest functioning. But the two work together. So the key take on point is, if we move, our cerebellum works better, and our cerebellum is a better place to work as a dynamo to keep the rest of the brain functioning better. And so be able to learn and output common sense, good sense and good actions.